So today's lesson is the last lesson on the energetics topic and the respiration part of that. And it follows on from last week's lesson on anaerobic respiration. And it's about the effects of exercise on the body. So when you're exercising and carrying out anaerobic respiration, what are the short and long term effects on the body? So these are the specification links. Please note there is some part there that says for higher tier only, which we will come back to at the end. I'm not going to read those through. You can all read them yourselves. So first of all, let's just have a quick reminder of what uh, respiration is about. So we've got a starter question here. We'll go through it. Oxygen from our lungs is carried by our blood to cells in our body where aerobic respiration takes place. Below is a chemical equation for this respiration. So we've got C6H12O6, and it's a little bit blurry, but it's there. Plus 6O2 gives us 6CO2 plus 6H2O. Name the substance with the formula C6H12O6. Now I did mention this in the last lesson, but you absolutely have to know the chemical formula for that particular molecule. What is the answer? Glucose, I hear you all cry. Excellent. Name the structures in the cytoplasm of our cells where aerobic respiration takes place. So again, this goes back to chapter one that we did uh, in year nine. So again, what is the what are the names of the structures? And I hear you all say mitochondria. Excellent. So question two, explain as fully as you can why, resp why respiration has to take place more rapidly during exercise. So key words that we are looking for here are muscles and energy. Only worth two marks, but as you can see from the mark scheme, what we're looking for is that more energy is needed because there is increased in muscular activity. So you have to make that emphasis that you understand that we need more energy because the muscles are doing more. Okay, so it's, we don't just say because the muscles need energy, won't get you the marks. It has to be because they need more. So let's have a look at this. We've got a banana, a donut, and a loaf of bread there. And it says, why do long distance runners need lots of carbohydrates before a race? A couple of seconds to think about that. Okay, so what do all these three things have in common? Well, what they have in common is that they all contain large amounts of carbohydrate. And before a long distance race, marathon runners or any runners like to do what they call carb loading. So that is an effect. They eat as much carbohydrate and what they do is they fill up the glycogen stores in the muscles. So glycogen is where we store glucose in the muscles. We will come on to this a little bit later but they try and fill up those glycogen stores as much as they can so that they've got plenty of glucose to call upon when they're doing their long distance races. Okay. Right, so we're going to have a look at what happens when you exercise now. So when you exercise, there are three, th three key things that we have to know that we do. We breathe faster, we breathe deeper and our heart rate increases. And we need to consider why these three things are happening. So again, I'm going to go back to terminology here to start with. Breathing faster or at a higher frequency, fine. Breathing deeper or exchanging more gas per breath or our breaths are a bigger volume, correct. Saying we breathe more, is not going to get you any marks in the exam. Okay, so we breathe faster, we breathe deeper, our heart rate increases, and now we're going to consider why. So, firstly, there are going to be two uh, video clips, okay, that are going to be at the end of this video, and I would like you, while you're watching them, to think about the following questions. So, how does heart rate change during exercise? Describe and explain the changes in the lungs during exercise. And then again, why do marathon runners carb load before the race? So, whilst you're watching this video, and I apologise in advance, they're a bit odd, okay, uh, but they're quite useful. Uh, the chap narrated them, is a little bit strange, but you'll get used to him. And after we've watched them, I will come back and we will discuss 
the answers to these questions. Right! So what do you reckon your heart does when you exercise? Well, the heart's there to pump blood around your body. So we need to look at how it does that. Obviously, it doesn't look like that. But it's the best way to see what's going on. Your blood comes back from the body, all tired and out of oxygen. The first bit of the heart it goes into is called the right atrium. This is a weak little sack that just needs to collect the blood and move it on to the next bit of the heart. And that's the right ventricle, which has the job of sending the blood up to the lungs to pick up oxygen. This bit's called the pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary is just a fancy word for something to do with the lungs. Now the blood comes back to the heart, all perky and full of oxygen, into the left atrium, this side. That's right. The same as if you're looking down at your own heart. The left atrium pumps it into the left ventricle. And that's the strongest part of the heart that's got to pump all that oxygen-rich blood around your whole body. Now, let's see what the heart actually looks like. Looks like bagpipes, doesn't it? But just think of it as a big muscle. The muscle you need to exercise so all your other muscles get oxygen. I said exercise! Come on! Faster! You see? It's pumping faster. That's its heart rate. And deeper. That's its stroke volume. And put that together. When you exercise, your heart manages to double the amount of blood it can pump round your body. And most of that blood is carrying oxygen to your muscles that are working harder. I said work harder! In fact, your muscles consume 80% of the blood flow during exercise. And when you're sat on your ass, they get a measly 10%. Now that's tidy. And who said you could stop? Move it! Right! So what do you reckon goes on in your lungs when you exercise? Your lungs are a bit of genius. They're designed to collect invisible fuel that's found in the air. And that's oxygen. As we breathe in, air travels down the trachea, bronchus, bronchi, to the tiny bronchial tubes. And the whole point of this is to get fresh air into the alveoli. These are microscopic air sacs that are so tiny we're going to have to get a little bit closer. Oh, so how does the outside air get inside? The alveoli have incredibly thin walls, so those oxygen molecules can just diffuse across them and into the blood vessels that are crammed around. At the same time, your blood gets rid of carbon dioxide, which is a waste product made when your body burns oxygen. Well, that's all very well, but what happens when you exercise? Come on, get moving! When you exercise, your body might want 15 times more oxygen. That's a hell of a rise in fuel consumption. So your lungs have to breathe deeper, pulling in more air. And faster, replacing the air more often. Until the muscles that cause our lungs to expand and contract just can't go any faster. That's why athletes can breathe faster than unfit people. Their diaphragms and the muscles between their ribs are stronger. See, it's all down to exercise. Can you stop that heavy breathing now? It's freaking me out.
Right, I hope you enjoyed watching those videos. Sorry about that. Okay, so what did we come across? We explained how heart rate changes during exercise. So the heart rate increases, the heart rate goes up. That is pumping more blood around the, bo uh, sorry, around the body. Now, as he's explained in the video, what the amount of blood that leaves the heart in one beat is called your stroke volume. And if you increase the number of beats and you increase your stroke volume, then you increase your cardiac output. You are pumping more blood around the body. That blood is going to the lungs and this is picking up oxygen. It is going to the liver and picking up glucose. And it is taking that to the cells so they can respire. If they can respire, they are releasing more energy and providing that to the muscles so the muscles can carry on for long periods of time. The lungs, we are breathing deeper, we are breathing faster. Again, why? We need to exchange more gas. We need to get more oxygen in so it can go into the blood and the lungs, go to the cells where respiration occurs. We need to get rid of the carbon dioxide. Too much carbon dioxide in the blood is dangerous. Okay, so that's why we need to carry out these changes. And then why, we talked about this briefly earlier, why do marathon runners carb load before the race? It's to make sure they've got enough glycogen stores to draw on whilst they are running their race. Now, we will come back to this again later on in the, in the, in the course, but basically, when you are doing anything, the first port of call for glucose is the glucose that's in your blood. When you've used all that up, the body then starts breaking down the glycogen stores in the liver and in the muscles. And then when you've broken all that up, it then starts to break down the fat stores. So, but if you can put lots of glycogen in your muscles or and in your liver, then you can draw on that. It's much quicker to draw on that and start to break down the fat. So this is what the summary of that you need to know. So you either need to pause the video and write this into your books or you can copy it from the PDF file that I've attached to this homework, or you can just print out the PDF and stick it in your book, whatever's easiest. So this is the key things that we need to know. When we exercise, a number of changes take place in the body. The heart rate increases, this increases blood flow to the cells and supplies them with more glucose and oxygen for respiration. It also removes excess carbon dioxide faster. And then the rate and depth of your breathing increases. This increases the rate of gas exchange. So carbon dioxide is removed at a faster rate and oxygen is taken up quicker. So it's very simple. You know, we need to get more oxygen in, more carbon dioxide out, more glucose to the cells. So the respiration can occur and they can release that energy so the muscles can carry out more activity. But if we are doing a race where we are going to work particularly hard for a short period of time, what will be happening is our muscles will be respiring anaerobically. Now this isn't the case for something like a marathon runner because obviously if that was the case they'd never be able to finish the marathon. But it is the case for things like sprinters or if you are doing some very intense so hit exercise for a short period of time. What you do is your body cannot supply the cells with oxygen at a fast enough rate. So you build up what is called the oxygen debt. So basically you owe your cells some oxygen. They have broken down that glucose without oxygen and they've broken it down into lactic acid. As we know, lactic acid is poisonous. Lactic acid causes muscle fatigue, which is why you have to stop your anaerobic respiration. You can't keep it going indefinitely. So. You build up this oxygen debt because you have this lactic acid in your system. So when you finish exercising, your rate of breathing and your heart rate does not go back down to normal straight away. What it does is it stays quite high. You're still breathing deeply, your heart's still beating. And what that is doing is getting the oxygen, replenishing your oxygen, getting the oxygen back into the body to repay the oxygen debt. Again, you need to write this and write in red into your book, or as I said, print it out and pause the video or copy it off the PDF. So, lactic acid, which was very dangerous, uh, was built up. We've now got that oxygen in. We're going to break down the lactic acid and carry on essentially with respiration and turn that into carbon dioxide and water. Now, this happens in the liver. So, the lactic acid that is produced in the cells doesn't stay in the cells. It builds up uh, in the muscles, but then it diffuses into the blood 
travels to the liver and that's where it gets converted back into glucose and then it can carry on and go through respiration. So the metabolic process of breaking down the lactic acid and paying back the oxygen debt occurs in the liver. Okay, so that's where that happens. Now, obviously, I've gone through this fairly quickly. Uh, I am going to now show you Sean's video and the version of this. So he will also summarise everything because, as we know, you don't believe anything unless I show you a video about it. Uh, and then I have a question for you to do. Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what happens in the body during exercise. And if you're a higher tier student, you should then be able to describe what's meant by the oxygen debt. Now, as we saw in the last video, humans need energy for movement, to keep warm and for chemical reactions to build larger molecules. All of the energy we need is provided by respiration. As we saw, there are two types of respiration. These are aerobic and anaerobic. Now, when we're relaxing like this, we don't need a great deal of energy, and that's because we're not moving. But during exercise, the body needs a great deal of energy for muscle contraction, and the body has to react to the increased demand for energy. Now, because the body needs more energy, aerobic respiration increases. This means that the body cells require more oxygen. So, to provide this extra oxygen, both the breathing rate and the breathing volume increase. In other words, we breathe more frequently and we take deeper breaths. This gets more oxygen into the bloodstream. The heart rate also increases to pump this oxygenated blood around the body. Now, there's a big problem here. Sometimes not enough oxygen can be supplied to the muscles, especially if we're exercising hard. At this point, anaerobic respiration now takes place in the muscles. Now, as we saw in the last video, during anaerobic respiration, the oxidation of glucose is incomplete. This leads to a buildup of the chemical lactic acid. During long periods of vigorous activity, the lactic acid causes the muscles to become fatigued. This causes the muscles to stop contracting efficiently. At this point, the body has to remove the lactic acid from the muscles, and this creates a condition called the oxygen debt. If you're a foundation student, you can stop watching now, but if you're a higher tier student, you need to keep watching. So as we've seen during vigorous exercise, anaerobic respiration produces lactic acid in the muscles. The lactic acid is transported out of the muscles by the blood. The lactic acid is then taken to the liver and it's converted back to glucose in a series of chemical reactions. Now, reacting with the accumulated lactic acid and removing it from the cells requires oxygen. So the oxygen debt is the amount of extra oxygen the body needs after exercise to deal with the accumulated lactic acid. That's why people continue breathing rapidly for some time after finishing exercise. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on exercise in my vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe what happens in the body during exercise. And if you're a higher tier student, you should then be able to describe what's meant by the oxygen debt. Thank you.